Hey everyone, good afternoon. My name is Noel and I'm the Education Advisor here at Thinkful. And I'm Bumik and I am the Program Manager for Full-Time Bootcamp. Yeah, and we'd like to welcome everyone to another very special edition of our Web Development Bootcamp Info Session. Today we're actually going to be focusing the majority of the time on our full-time program. So if you're tuning in uh, to learn more about the full-time bootcamp, you've come to the right place. If you're listening to um, find out a little bit more about the Flexible program, don't worry, we'll also be covering it in uh, brief detail, but the main focus will be today the full-time program. And today, for those of you who are sticking with us till the very end, we do have a um, special announcement that we'd like to make. We're going to have... Um, Basically, um, the prep course, which is a three-week prep course that normally costs $250. We're going to be sharing a link um, for you to enroll for free. So stick around for the info session, and we'll be sharing that in the chat. Yeah, and if you don't know yet what the prep course for the full-time program is, don't worry, we'll talk about the prep course in really great detail in the next couple of minutes. But yeah, we prepared some, uh, some slides for everyone today, so we'll get, uh, get started with that. And as I mentioned, um, the main focus of today's presentation really will be the full-time program um, for the Web Development Bootcamp. Some of you may be asking yourself, what is the, uh, the Web Development Bootcamp to start? And we've outlined what we're going to be covering today. First, talk about what the Web Dev, Web Dev Bootcamp is. Then we'll discuss the one-on-one -on -one mentorship and the live support that you'll receive in all Thinkful programs, but most specifically the Web Development Bootcamp. And then as I mentioned, I'll briefly cover some of the differences between the Flexible Bootcamp program and our full-time bootcamp, um, after which we'll jump into really describing the experience for all of our students in the full-time program. And then we'll talk about the career prep and job placement component and cover some of the scholarships and finances. We'll be able to take any of the questions that you have. So do, uh, do type those into the chat box. The computer science concepts and the developer tools that you'll need to not only land your first job, but also succeed at your future role. Because the entire point of the bootcamp program really is to help you succeed as a developer um, and to find that first job. It covers a very comprehensive career prep and job placement process. And as you can see from your screen, the bootcamp itself has been quite successful over the last uh, about year and a half. Currently, our graduates are seeing a 94% job placement rate and a 185% salary increase. And I wanted to note, too, that we're working with graduates and students from all around the country. Most of the students that begin Thinkful's program don't really have experience with coding. They've looked at things like Treehouse or Code Academy for a couple of weeks. Um, so Thinkful is very much still true to the boot camp experience. We do have students that are enrolling in our program, of course, with previous experience. But uh, the good thing is that when you're working through such a one-on-one -on -one focused program, you have a lot of flexibility and really able to customize your learning experience. Right, and the, but the main benefit is if you've been dabbling in resources for a while, um, no much of two weeks, but we've had students break dabbling at Code Academy, Free Code Camp, things like that, yeah. for months before, and seeing resources all on the web, and here you get structure around that. And the first program, uh, Noel's gonna, or we'll start with the support, and then we'll jump into the specific programs. Yeah, and so, when a program is so heavily focused around support, it really is important that you have a professional with you through every step of the way. And in the Thinkful Bootcamp program, that support is not just there in the form of technical support and helping you build the technical skills and helping you craft a portfolio, but also in helping you navigate the tech industry, uh, which for some of you may be a first experience. Maybe you've never worked in tech. Maybe you've never really been in an industry that is as competitive. And so it's extremely important for you to understand um, the job search process as well. From the personal mentor that you'll be working with every single week of the program through video chat, through the different mentors that you can access through Q&A sessions, and the employer network manager and career coach that you work with towards the end of the program, really thankful is there for you throughout the entire process to help you find a job as a developer or engineer. Right, you're constantly surrounded by support. Whether it's your personal mentor, the program manager who's responsible for your success, or uh, the career prep side um, that's happening all the time. And now we'll kind of cover um, what a typical mentor's background um, might look like. Yeah, and because the mentors that work for Thinkful do such an incredible job and really put in so much effort into making your, your program a success, it's extremely important that we find not only great engineers, but mentors who also have the type of personality that would make them great teachers. Um, two perfect examples of that are on your screen now. Shristi coming in as a true JavaScript master, having worked with virtually every framework and library that JavaScript has to offer. Um, she has about 10 years of experience working as a software architect, and more recently she's focused her attention around starting a site called Possible, which encourages uh, women to get into the tech industry. JP on the right is someone who's 
graphic uh, designer turned web developer. He's worked as a freelance developer for Nike and HP, building really impressive sites for them. Um, and we picked Shristi and JP because they have very different backgrounds. They have, um, they have backgrounds that are completely different than other mentors. They really showcase that mentors have individual interests and that really bring something else to the table besides just being a great engineer or developer. Yeah, exactly. Like for when I, when I think about what makes a great mentor and in terms of what we hire for as well, um, they have to kind of fit three important traits. They have to have the technical expertise to speak confidently on a topic and be able to answer any student questions. But at the same time, they have to be able to ex explain that well to a beginner. Um, using the right metaphors, the right analogies, um, breaking it, breaking each concept down at a foundational level. Um, and third, they have to have the right empathy because this is going to be an intensive program. There's going to be moments where you need a pep talk, motivation, times where you just want to vent your frustration. That's what your mentor is here for. They're not just um, a mentor, they're your friend too in the process. Yeah, definitely. They really do become your best friend in development. and. Um, the mentors that work for Thankful all have an average of about 10 years of experience working as developers or engineers in the industry. And they go through a very rigorous hiring process. We really do select for incredible engineers who will be great mentors. Just to give you an idea of how rigorous that process really is, over the last year or so, we've spoken to about 1,000 mentors who wish to become, um, or Thankful can candidates who wish to become Thankful mentors, and we've selected fewer than 20% of them. So it is a very rigorous hiring process indeed. Um, and in a program like the full-time program, that ends up being really important because the mentors are there to support you throughout the entire way. In the flexible program, um, which I'll actually just jump into discussing now, um, the mentors play a really important role because they are your main, your main connection. They are your main way of not only building the technical skills that you need, but making progress in the course. As I mentioned earlier, the main focus of this info session will be the full-time program. But we do want to make sure that for those of you that have joined us in, in curiosity about, a, about what the flexible program is, we do cover some of its fundamentals and basics. The flexible program is a boot camp that's perfect for someone who perhaps isn't able to quit their full-time job. Someone who's able to devote about 20 hours per week or more, meeting with their personal mentor three times each week over video chat with screen sharing to not only set the pace for their program, but really learn. You're graduating in about six months total and joining a community of hundreds of students and mentors through the live office hours that you can attend each and every week, each and every day. But the flexible program, as I, I should note, does offer you the same curriculum and the same concepts that you'll learn in the full-time program. It also offers you the same level of career support and you can expect the same career opportunities and the same job placement guarantee. But the program itself is very structured for someone who, as I mentioned, is looking to move through a boot camp at their own pace. Someone who really knows that they work well by establishing deadlines that they meet. The or you have a job that you can't quit. Yeah, correct, or perhaps you have family and friends that keep you busy, or you can put in 40 to 50 hours per week, just not Monday through Friday, maybe Monday evenings or weekday evenings and weekends. Um, however, the full-time program, on the other hand, is very, very structured, and I think Bumik does a really great job of describing the program because he's actually in, this, in the session rooms every day of the week, keeping progress, um, or keeping um, an eye on the progress that our students are making. And we have a handy dandy slide for that too. So, the full time boot camp at a high level, um, it is highly structured, as Noel just mentioned. It is four months long, and there's a set schedule um, from 10 a.m. Eastern all the way to 6 p.m. Pacific, which we'll jump to in a second. But at a high level, what are kind of the stand up features of this? Basically, every single day is structured, so you know exactly what you're working on. There's pair programming involved with the, co the students in your class, and there's also one on one mentorship. At day. Um, and the classes are small, you know, between 8 to 14 students, so you will get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention. And it really feels like you're kind of stepping inside of a classroom. So the screenshot you see right now is actually um, one of the first workshops. And um, it really feels like you're in a community with everyone else and in the workshop. Uh, you'll get a chance to really engage and ask questions um, and get a lot of help throughout the day. And now we'll kind of jump into what a typical day looks like. Um, so at a high level, um, in the first seven to 10 weeks of a boot camp, the, the daily structure is pretty similar. It's exactly what you see on the page now. So the day starts off with a workshop where you get exposed to the topic of the day. This is led by an instructor, someone who has a ton of experience. Um, and we call it a workshop and not a lecture because students get to participate. You ask questions throughout the time 
and the instructor asks you know small exercise questions to make sure each student is in, engaged. And then the rest of the day, you will have with your pair and a project or a challenge that you'll build to help practice that concept. So you'll do about an hour and a half of that um, in morning pairing, then you'll take a break for lunch. Um, and then everyone will get back together again in a group review where the instructor asks the whole group to update um, the instructor on how far they got along the project. And this is also where um, you'll share your code, and share your screen so you get an idea of what everyone else is doing and the instructor will also clarify problems that everyone might have been having. And then you jump back into your afternoon pair programming. And one thing to note here, um, during both morning and an afternoon pairing, there will be an instructor or TA available on hand to answer any questions. So let's say you start building your shopping list on day three and you get stuck, all you have to do is just ping the instructor and they'll jump into your pairing session and help clarify the concept. Uh, and then each day will end with the one-on-one -on -one mentor session. Um, that'll be, it says 6 to 6.30, but you can actually kind of decide when you want to meet with your mentor. Some people like right after, some want a break. And then in the evening, um, you'll spend a couple hours getting ready for the next day. Um, and during this time, you'll have access to the same q and sessions, the same Slack groups that we talked about earlier. But um, what's more important to emphasize here is that each day is highly structured. And then after um, these first kind of seven to eight weeks when you're learning the concepts, the second half of the boot camp really changes and you focus on skills that you need to actually work like an engineer. So just to kind of give you an example of that, um, in week 12 there's something called Flex Week where each student picks a unique skill they want to learn and they, we, get, we, we match you with the one-on-one -on -one mentor and you focus on that new skill all week. So examples of that have been D3, Rails, Angular, uh, Python, um, someone I think is going to do TypeScript and 3.js for the next week. Um, but yeah, you get to learn how to pick up a new skill on the job. Because most likely when you start your job, it might not be the exact same step you learned with Thinkful. Um, there are other weeks uh, like that are Swap Week, which is in week 13. Um, for me, that's my favorite week because you actually learn what you're going to do on the job, which is not necessarily building stuff from scratch, but updating an existing code base. So on Monday, every student will pick their own idea they want to work on that week. And on Wednesday, you will actually switch to a random person in your class and finish their project for them. So you get really exposed to how to work on a code base. Um, and then finally, in the last three weeks, you get a lot of time on building one really impressive capstone project in a larger team. And you get exposed to basically working like an engineer. The process is very similar to what engineers are thankful go through. They'll have daily stand-ups, they'll divide responsibilities with a product manager, a project manager, and a design lead, and you'll break things down in using Trello and Wireframe, and towards the end you'll demo the project as well. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the full-time programs process or progress, is um, they have a demo day where we're all thankful HQ members get together and watch presentations that are um, organized and presented by the full-time students. And it's very exciting because you get to see these students, maybe that I spoke to them about four months ago, having not really had much experience with programming, a little bit concerned about whether they could actually become programmers, whether they could succeed in, succeed in a program as immersive as a boot camp, and then transition into a role as an engineer, actually complete a product that is job ready. That's something that they're gonna add to their portfolio and then present to an employer and be offered a position as a developer for. So it is very, very exciting. It follows, as Bumit mentioned, a very similar structure to a traditional in-person boot camp, as well as what your future job as a developer will probably be like. So, as, an, as the education advisor at Thinkful, I think one of the bigger questions that I receive from students is, how can something that's entirely online really offer me that level of support? How can something that's entirely remote really give me the structure that I need to help me succeed in learning to code in four months? And it's something that we've put a lot of thought in, we've put a lot of raw hard work in, and the bootcamp program that you see now is the end product of that. And it's still growing, it's still changing. We always find new innovative ways to involve students in more interactive or more hands-on projects. Yeah, our goal is that every cohort is better than the previous cohort. So anytime like a cohort happens and if we notice something that could be better, we try to get it immediately fixed uh, then, but also make sure that the next cohort has an even better experience. And because the cohort in October 31st is our sixth cohort, um, the program from the first pilot to now is dramatically different too, which yeah, is great. Definitely. It's kind of like an iPhone, really. Every version just gets better because <laughs> we receive a lot of feedback from the yeah. students and you'll 
you shouldn't be surprised if you do decide to enroll in a uh, program at Thinkful, whether it's the flexible or the full-time program, that one of our co-founders will reach out to you and ask you how your week is going, ask you about any points of feedback that you have outside of the daily reflections that you do in the full-time program or the check-ins that you have with your mentor every week in the flexible program. These are extra steps that Thinkful takes overall to make sure that we really are improving the product as we, we build it. Well, but, so what we want to do now is kind of talk about, so how do you know, so let's say this program right. seems interesting, how do you know whether it's the right fit? How do we know whether you're going to keep up with the pace of the boot camp as well? Um, so we've designed a three-week prep course for exactly that. Um, so basically, um, for you to determine whether online learning makes sense and for us to determine whether you're going to be able to keep up with the rigorous pace of the boot camp and have good success there, we've developed a three-week prep course. Um, and we'll drop a link in the chat for you to actually be able to enroll in this course for free. Again, this is only if you're interested in the full-time boot camp um, that's four months long, one of the cohorts starting October 31st, the next one is on November 28th, and we'll drop a link in the chat. But let me kind of just describe it for a little bit. Um, so basically, you, when you enroll in the prep course, you will have immediate access to our curriculum, and you'll be asked to complete the first two units of it, where you'll learn HTML, CSS, build a couple of websites with it, and then also get exposed to JavaScript and push all that code to GitHub using command line as well. Um, and in terms of support, you'll have three one-on-one -on -one sessions every single week, and you'll have access to Q&A sessions and Slack, um, what we talked about earlier. And now, what do we look for in the students? How do, I, how do I know if I'm a good fit? How will I get accepted to the boot camp? Basically, we look for a few things. So first and foremost, is your goal to become a developer? Is that what you actually want to do in life? Um, after you graduate, this is something that should be something that you're passionate about. And if you don't know yet, that is perfect for you to figure out in the prep. You're just gonna actually start dabbling in code a little bit. Um, second is, do you have the time to commit to succeed in this program? So the class does run from 10 a.m. to 6 uh, p.m. Eastern, which for the West Coast folks, that's 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., which means you kind of have the rest of the day to relax and continue getting ready for the next day. Um, and about five hours commitment on your own terms on the weekend. Um, but it's four months long and we need you to be able to commit that time. And then the last three points are kind of what we evaluate um, from the prep course. So can you finish that content three weeks? That's basically the pace. For projects, are you actually uh, comfortable with the concepts you learned? Or did you just kind of Google or get a lot of help from your mentor to figure it out? So we'll act I'll actually ask about the concepts. It's my job to make sure you're a good fit before moving on. And then the third one, which I think is kind of most important, is personality and whether programming is something that looks like the right career for you. And what, I, what, what do we actually mean by that? So as a programmer, like, at, like when you start that career, you're going to be debugging all day. There's gonna be things that don't work and you're gonna to have to fix them. And that kind of mindset, the idea of being stuck or the idea of uncertainty, that's something you should be exposed to and get excited by, like solving problems, fixing things. So if you're someone who if something is broken and you get really frustrated and angry, that's not the right fit for this boot camp because we're moving from project to project uh, pretty quickly. Um, and then the other thing we look for in personality is kind of team camaraderie because this will be an intensive program, so we want to make sure students kind of kind of pick each other up. If they're struggling, you reach out to them and help them out. So like having a really good team mentality about it because you're going to be with those same 8 to 12 students every day and you're going to form great uh, friendships with them. People meet up together and go to the movies, we've seen that already. People go to meetups together. So we want you to become friends with your group too. So again, uh, this three week prep course um, is for the full time boot camp. and in terms of timing and scheduling, um, the next cohort starts on October 31st. Graduation is February 24th and there is a break week uh, during the holidays. Don't worry to get Christmas, New Year's, all that time off. Um, and then the next cohort starts on November 28th and graduates on April 7th. Um, but if you are interested in the boot camp, uh, there's a three week prep course and we'll drop a link in the chat um, right now and, and we'll also do that later at the end of the call. Yeah, and again, the prep course is for the full time program. So if you are really interested in the flexible program, I know we've gotten some questions, which we'll definitely get to at the end, no worries there. But there are a couple of questions in there for the flexible program. So again, we wanna really stress that if you're looking into the flexible program, the full-time prep course link that we're dropping in the, uh, the chat box now is not the right option. Please take some time to, to schedule a call with me or to get in touch with me via email if you're interested in the flexible program. That said, um, 
for some of you, as I mentioned earlier, as we mentioned earlier, joining a boot camp and looking for a job as a developer is going to be your first time navigating the tech industry. And it's really no surprise that the tech industry is such a competitive field that you really sometimes will be lost and will not know what to do in terms of how to submit applications or how to prepare for a technical interview. And as a boot camp program, Thinkful also has to be really good at preparing you for that, not just the technical skills that you build in the program, but also the non-technical. And that's one of the reasons that we place such a high level of importance on the career prep and the job placement component of the course. Very similar to how we're pairing each student with a personal mentor for the program, we're also pairing each student with a career coach, whose job it is to help you get hired. And you're working with this professional really from the very beginning of the, the course, where you're learning to network and first talking to that career coach about what your future role as a developer will be. Think about the type of company you'd like to work for, where in the country you'd like to work, where in the world you'd like to work, and then based on the technical skills that you're building in the program, you're putting those to practice. You're joining other mentors from within our network to attend mock interview sessions where they're going to be asking you questions about your technical skills. They're also going to be asking you questions about your experience and your history, uh, what your goals are, to make sure that you can really perform under pressure and that you don't get nervous and repeat yourself or that you go off topic. Once you've built those technical skills and crafted your portfolio, you and your career coach are going to begin working one-on-one -on -one every single week at the end of the program to initially help you review and um, really polish all of your application materials, everything from your portfolio to your um, LinkedIn profile, the resume that you build, the emails that you send out, and the phone calls that you make. And then um, something very specific to Thinkful's career prep and job placement uh, program happens. The career coach actually introduces you to employers and sets up introductions and interviews on your behalf. This is something that's pretty unique to Thinkful's platform. I don't know really any online bootcamp that does this or takes this approach. I'm not sure that I know many in-person bootcamps that do either. But this is again something that's almost essential for Thinkful to do because we are an online program. We're not headquartered and based on only in New York City or only in San Francisco. And one of you just asked a question about Hack Reactor, which I'll, I'll get to in just a sec. But because we're working with graduates from all around the country, it's very important that we perform research in the market where you're going to be looking for jobs and that we really establish connections with companies that we'll introduce you to later. And this isn't just a random list of companies. It really is a lot of research that goes into this based on where your career goals are um, and what the skill set that you have is so that when we present you to an employer, it's a quality introduction as opposed to the number of introductions that we're making. Right. The thing to point out here, like the point of quality over quantity, is um, outside of that is our approach for each individual student is both personal and thorough. Um, students are all over the country, like in the cohort starting in October. We have already have students, one in New York, one in SF, one in Durham. Um, so we can't just have a generic uh, career prep process for everyone. Um, it has to be tailored to the individual student. We have to ask them what their goals are, what size of company they're looking at, um, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses. Yeah. Um, and from then, we develop a process. So when we when Noel says something like, we'll review your resume or make your portfolio better, that it's a very thorough process. So um, I can I can speak to the resume component of it for the full-time bootcamp. So basically, in break week, which is kind of halfway through, we will ask you to submit a draft of your resume. That draft will get um, feedback from um, in a one-on-one -on -one video chat right afterwards when you meet with your career coach, it'll give you high level feedback. Right after that, you'll have to submit a second draft. That second draft will be in a Google Doc and our whole career team will add comments over that Google Doc, make it better, send you the polished version and teach you how uh, you actually did a better job in making that resume. Similarly, for the portfolio, there is a four step process. You will first uh, develop a wireframe and think about the content you're gonna have on your portfolio. That'll get some feedback. Then you'll start actually building the live version. You know, register the, the domain, buildingpatel.com, whatever it is. Um, then you'll get uh, design and layout feedback from um, Olex, who's a front engineer here. Then you'll get copy feedback on exactly how you can position yourself the strongest. And then right after you graduate, if there's any portfolio pieces that aren't up to par, you will spend that time making them better. So each of these assets we're talking about, like resume, LinkedIn, uh, GitHub, cover letter, uh, it's a thorough, personalized process on making them polished until, uh, until we get to a point where we can start making introductions to companies or helping you in your networking process. Yeah, and overall, um, I think that is, it is very important to note as well that we're not going to be pairing you with a, a professional recruiter 
we're not going to be sending you to a recruiting company. That's not the way the thing cooperates ever. Um, instead, we have an entirely in-house uh, career services team, so no percentage of your salary is ever going to be taken away. And you'll not continue paying the Thinkful program fee once you're searching for jobs. It's already included in the tuition that you pay while you're enrolled in the program, so I hope that clears up some of the questions that we may, we may have gotten. Um, and we do this, really, we put such a, a, such a large emphasis on both the technical and the non-technical component, because as we mentioned, the focus of a boot camp is to help you transition into that future role. And Something that Thinkful has done also in the last year to really become a more transparent institution about the graduates uh, that we work with and what their outcomes are is we actually publish that data. In January of 2016, Thinkful became the first online boot camp to publish a report with statistics on the outcomes of our graduates. On this report, um, some of which you see on screen now, we have job placement data, meaning how many, what percentage of our graduates are beginning full-time jobs as developers or engineers, 94%. What's their salary increase? Uh, what are their job titles? Ranging from software engineer to web developer to junior developer, all of course depending on the type of company they work for and the job they want. How long it takes them to get employed after they graduate from the program, as well as a couple of numbers that, um, that cover uh, what the age of the graduates were or was, where they were in the country when they started the program, whether they were full-time, part-time employed or unemployed, just to give you an idea that there is such a really broad range of, of graduate person or student personality, so that if you're wondering, hey, you know, I have um, really no experience and I'm living in a part of the country where web development isn't really popular, there are people all around the country that are beginning boot camp programs like Thinkful. And once we published this report in January, we, we took it a step further. We actually had that report audited by a third party, an accounting firm that we worked with that's based here in the New England area. And that, that accounting firm reached out to not only um, Thinkful for verification of data, but also some of our graduates to make sure that the job placement, or the, uh, the salaries that we reported, as well as their job titles and where they were working was all accurate and legitimate. They um, got back to us saying that yes, we verified this report. Here is our, our cover letter verifying that, and you can access that entire report and also the report that we received from the accounting firm online. Yeah, and we'll, we'll probably um, we'll audit ourselves every single year or twice a year, and the stats that you see on the live page are also updated in real time every month. Yeah, correct. And why why do we do this? Why do we go this extra step? Why aren't why aren't other boot camps doing this? It's a perfectly good question. And again, we do that one to celebrate the success of our graduates, make sure that we can be completely transparent about what other students can expect, and in doing so, celebrate the hard work that our mentors and our Thinkful HQ team members are putting in but also to give you the tools that you need to make an informed decision about the boot camp that you're attending. Make sure that if you see a job placement rate on a company's or a boot camp's uh, website, you ask what it is and they should be able to tell you what it is and what those jobs are. That if you see somewhere on a site that there's a $94,000 uh, $94, starting salary average for students around the country or web developers around the country, that you ask. Is that what your graduates are making, or is that a number that you pulled off of Indeed or off of Glassdoor? Because if it is, it's not necessarily representative of what their graduates may be earning, and it's important that you know those details. And of course, something that's also very important is that a program is able to stand behind its program with, um, with a guarantee on your success. And I'm thankful of the job that you may have seen on other programs is that we're not asking you to abide by a super long list of criteria to have that guarantee even apply. As you can see on your screen, really what's most important for Thinkful is that you as a student are committed to learning while you're in the program, meaning that you don't miss one-on-one -on -one sessions, that you don't fall behind on submitting projects according to the deadlines that you establish, and that it's clear that you are learning, that you're not just going to Stack Overflow, copying and pasting code and kind of rearranging lines so that it really fits your project. Once you graduate from the program, we ask that you are actively looking for jobs. And if you don't find a job within six months of completing the program, we refund 100% of your tuition. Now, of course, there are a couple of points of criteria that you see on the screen, which are honestly pretty self-explanatory. One, that you're at least 21 years old, that you're legally able to work in the United States, and that you speak and write English to a proficient level. An amendment to that last point is that you're legally able to work in the United States or Canada if you are looking for jobs in Canada. Um, and the last one, very important, that you are living, willing to commute to, or move to a city with a healthy market for jobs in web development. Now, what exactly does that mean? That means that we can't guarantee you a job if there are no jobs in your area. And it also means that um, it's important to, to consider whether a boot camp program is the right fit. If you're not able to relocate, we're always willing to work with students who aren't able to relocate, 
we're, we aren't living in an area with jobs and web development, but it is something that we have or to be. Or within a community. Or within a community, but it is important that we have to be completely transparent about that. Thinkful, however, is never going to publish a list of 25 or 27 cities and kind of tell you these are the only cities that we work in, and if you don't live in one of these cities, tough luck, apply to one of them, and wherever you get the first job, I'll put your life and move. Instead, we work with you. We make it clear that if you do want to relocate, that you consider being um, perhaps relocating once you've completed the program, or scheduling some time to be physically present in the area where you're searching for jobs so that you can, you can commit or conduct, sorry, an efficient job search. So as Bamik may have uh, covered earlier, another component is that you are really submitting a quality application as opposed to tons of applications. And when we take a, a look at the cities for job market or the job market for, for development is healthy, we have a list of like 30 cities that we know for a fact, but we also understand that some cities change. And a city like Las Vegas, for example, 40 years ago may have not been considered a healthy market for jobs and web development, but now it is. So if you're curious about the area in the country um, that you're living in now, where you'd be looking for jobs, and whether that qualifies for the guarantee, please tap it into the chat box or send it over my way. I'm happy to discuss that in greater detail. But yeah, I really wanted to quickly um, move over to the, the scholarships and financing options that we offer for the program. To start out with the, the pricing, the flexible program that we discussed in uh, brief detail earlier on in the presentation is at $1,500 per month because it is on a month-to-month -month basis. Uh, students only have to pay for the number of months that they're enrolled. Some students finish in four, other students finish in five or six, whereas the full-time program as a four-month-long course is $14,000 total. And we do have scholarships that you don't have to apply for, um, that all self-identifying women and U.S. military members are eligible for and to, to receive. The scholarships are the same in amount, but they're dispersed at a different, in a different format. For the flexible program, that's a $200 per month scholarship, for the full-time program, it will be the $1,200 scholarship applied to the total price of the course. And if you're worried, I can't really do $14,000 up front, I can't do $1,500 or $1,300 every month, we do offer tons of different payment plans and financing options that you can look into. If you're someone who's looking to apply for a loan to cover your program and make really low monthly payments, Skills Fund is a lender that we partner with. They're, um, they're a lender that partners with a lot of different boot camps, and we will work with them for a specific reason, that they're very transparent. They're very fair to students, and they uh, they work only with boot camps that have a job placement guarantee. So they really, really invest in their students' success as well. If you're curious about what the specifics of the financing options are, um, please schedule a call with me. I can always explain those to you over the phone, or we can hop on a video chat call and look at the payment calculator together. And you can also um, access that yourself by just going to thinkfullcom pricing. Um, but before we kind of transition into the questions, I just wanted to quickly iterate um, that for students who are here, um, because they're interested, well, my hair's crazy. Uh, <laughs> students here, it's still crazy. One second. Okay, students who are here who are interested in the full time boot camp, um, we do have the three week prep course um, that you can enroll in for free. That will drop a link in the chat. Um, if you don't really know whether the full time boot camp is the right fit and you're still kind of considering it, or you don't know whether programming is the right role, join that prep course. That's where you get all those questions answered, that literally the next step after enrolling is just scheduling a call with me um, where we jump on a video chat and dive into how the whole full-time bootcamp works. I'll just share my screen, show you how all that works um, so you can make an informed decision. But if you're interested in the flexible bootcamp, as um, Aaron might have mentioned in the chat, um, we are actually thinking about, um, or not we're thinking about, we're launching a prep program for the flexible bootcamp, um, and Aaron will share some information about that in the chat. But um, for the full-time boot camp, which is starting on October 31st and another one on November 28th, um, you must enroll in the three-week prep course beforehand, and we will share you a link to join that prep course for free um, in the chat right now. But let's go ahead and answer some questions. So the first question that we have is, what's the benefit of mentorship? Lots of boot camps have instructors. Yeah, um, all boot camps should have instructors, and the benefit of having an instructor versus the benefit of having a personal mentor is pretty crystal clear. It's personalization. It's personalization. It's having someone who can answer every question that you have without having to go to another student and really only give you five minutes of their time. Yeah, um, think about if you're going to a boot camp and uh, you're kind of jumping from topic to topic, you'll have this one consistent voice or engineer or expert with you every day that it, that it can explain concepts to a matter you're used to. So let's say you're going from React to Node, it'll be that mentor still. 
and you're starting to get into your algorithms, you'll still have that same mentor. And if, and by the way, if, you, if you're thinking that, oh man, what if I don't like my mentor? You know, talk to me, and we might, we'll figure out what that actually means, and if it still feels like this is not the right fit, we'll just reassign you to someone else that you'll work with the rest of the boot camp. Yeah, it's very rare that that'll ever happen, but we do understand that there are differences in teaching styles and learning styles. So if that were the case, um, uh, we're happy to pair you with a different mentor. We have a network of mentors that's over 350 strong, so right. finding you a professional to work with is no issue. Yeah, one question I, I did want to address because it comes up often um, from Allison. What happens if I fall behind? I know other boot camps kick you out if you fail a test. That is, aw that is awful, by the way. Do you kick students out if they're not meeting requirements? Makes me nervous. Uh, no, we will never ever do that. Um, our approach to, actually the first question to ask when I hear that is, how do you know if a student's falling behind? So um, let's just focus this question on full-time for now, but every day in the full-time boot camp, you will fill out your daily reflections where you'll answer three questions in the evening. How do you feel about the concept today? What could you have done to be more effective? You know, really reflecting on the whole experience. And third, how's peer program today? And, and provide feedback on your peer. We, as program managers on the ed team, we will read that response or your reflections every day for every single student, and we will respond accordingly. So let's say there is one or two specific students in your cohort falling behind, we'll just give you more support. We'll give you extra time with the mentor. We will um, kind of let the staff be on red alert. So like if you're asking a question um, during pair programming, we'll ask the TA to go to that student first and make sure they get their answer, question answered first. We'll make sure the instructor is following up and checking in on that particular student too and making sure they really understand that concept. And then at a higher level, um, if we notice that there are uh, I don't know, three or four students struggling with the topic, again, we'll learn that from the daily reflection, we can adapt the cohort to that particular group of students. So let's say four of the, as I said, four of the 12 students are struggling with the topic, we'll just cancel the upcoming day and make it a review day and just focus more on MongoDB before we move on to the next topic. So both as a group and on an individual level, we will make sure that cohort is not falling behind. And if they are, if it really feels like this is not um, the right pace for them, we will have uh, honest conversation and we might talk about switching to the flexible bootcamp, which could just be the right pace for you. But in general, um, we will do everything it takes for you to succeed with the full-time bootcamp and we'll be able to identify these kind of things as soon as they happen. Yeah, and in the flexible program it works in a similar way in that we, we take extra steps to make sure that you as a student have the right amount of support. If you're someone in the flexible program who has fallen behind and perhaps needs an additional mentor session for that week, we're happy to schedule you another session, obviously at no cost, just really about making sure that you understand the concept before you move on. And if it's something that's completely outside of your control, like you are struggling keeping up with the program because work has become really demanding or because something is happening in your personal life, work with us. We work with you, we make sure that you can maybe take a break from the course for a short while, wait and catch your breath, and then can begin working again at a more immersive pace once you're ready. Um, and with this actually is a good, a good transition to the, another question that we have from Anita, which is, how many hours per day do we need to give for the prep course? Um, about 15 hours per week, I would say, would be a good um, amount of hours to, to commit to the prep course. Right, there are students who are going through this um, with the full-time job already. Again, you don't have to quit your job just to join Until the prep you know. course. Um, total hourly commitment, I would say about 45 to 50 hours. Um, so if you do finish the content earlier, like yeah. people who are already kind of unemployed and ready to make this uh, jump, um, then we'll just have our final check-in earlier, and you can know earlier whether you've been you know, enrolled in the program. So yeah, about 15 hours of, of work if you distribute it evenly across the three weeks. What is the perception of hiring managers of thankful graduates? How do you compare with graduates of other boot camps like Hack Reactor? Really great question. So, um, the success of brick and mortar boot camps like Hack Reactor and App Academy really has changed the way that um, that employers look at graduates from in-person boot camps. And the success of programs like Thinkful has really changed the way that employers look at the um, applicants that they receive from online boot camps. So, overall, the industry is very, very open to hiring boot camp graduates. Now, how do Thinkful graduates compare to graduates from Hack Reactor? Let's put it this way: If you're someone who is enrolled in Hack Reactor, didn't have technical experience or a computer science degree, you're gonna be competing for the same jobs as one of our graduates who also didn't have a computer science degree or technical experience. Something that's very important to know is that Hack Reactor and App Academy have in a sense evolved past being a true bootcamp experience. 
because a lot of the students that are admitted to Hap Reactor and Hap Academy have CS degrees or have technical experience with programming. Maybe they're just programming in a different capacity. And so when a graduate finishes Hap Reactor or Hap Academy, having had five years of experience as a developer already, their starting salary is going to be much, much higher and they're going to be applying for different types of roles. So it's important to consider the fact that you're an entry-level developer, you're going to be applying for entry-level uh, developer roles. No bootcamp program, no matter how elite it is or how competitive it is, can offer you a mid-level role graduating out of a bootcamp. That's the, num the number of years of experience that you need to build is just impossible to, to do in four or three months. Yeah, and two points just to add before we move on to the next question. Um, there is, no matter what you think about Hack Reactor or Thinkful or whatever code in bootcamp, everything is still raw. Like, the whole industry is still new. Um, yeah. So when hiring managers look at students, they look at it individually. There isn't like some crazy level of prestige from Think right. or Hack Reactor yet. This is still a new industry. Um, and at the same time, um, what they know about coding bootcamp graduates is that you can pick up concepts quickly. That's the main thing. Even though you're new to this world, you have demonstrated the fact that you learned full stack JavaScript in four months. And that's what it's important. Another question that we have from Paul is, I'm really interested, however, I have no clue how to finance this course. As you mentioned, Paul, we do have financing options and payment plans that you can look into. I'm not sure whether you're interested in the flexible or the full-time program, so please feel free to reach out to me via email after the presentation, or even now, you can shoot me an email and I'll be sure to get to it later today, um, kind of redirecting you to the financing program page, uh, financing payment page, and we can talk about those in greater detail. Yeah, but just for, so you know, both options have monthly plans, deferred payment plans, and a loans option as well. Yep. Other question that we have is for the flexible program, I work a full-time job, all different shifts. Is the program flexible enough uh, to where I can access the program at any time and learn, or are there specific time frames? Yes, the program is definitely flexible enough to do so. Um, in fact, you have access to the curriculum 24-7 in both programs, really. But with the flexible program, you can decide when you devote those hours to the curriculum. Really, so long as you're putting in 20, uh, 25 hours per week, you're all set. The one-on-one -on -one sessions with your personal mentor are scheduled according to your time availability. And though generally they are at the same times each week, we can work with you and be flexible, but we do ask for some level of consistency. So um, all things that we can discuss via phone, happy to schedule a call with you. Another question that we have is from A. Richards. Upon graduation, can you get career assistance for cities uh, you do not live in but want to move to? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you will receive career support no matter where in the country or the world you want to search for jobs. We've worked to place graduates throughout the entire United States, also in Canada and the UK. We'll very soon be working in India and Australia. So, um, The yes. point to make here though is like, uh, this isn't like a policy thing. You, you are talking to people this whole time. Yeah. So, uh, A. Richards, if you joined the boot camp, you would talk to us at least 15, 20 times. Like, and us, I mean, not even your one-on-one -on -one mentor, or, I mean, the program managers, Noel, the career team, this is a conversation happens. This isn't a policy thing. You're talking to people and you're deciding together what is the right move for you. So for all, all of these questions, like on job hunt, career prep, title, salary, these are conversations you're having with people. Don't think of this as a MOOC or online class. Think of this more like you're getting um, help from people who care about you. Um, and, 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 and even for selfish reasons, because we guarantee you a job as a developer. So that, that is our business model, to help you get a job, period. But yeah, um, we, can, we can assist you. If you are looking for the guarantee to apply, it is really important that you're physically present in the location where you're searching for jobs. Now again, that doesn't mean that you have to relocate immediately after starting the program. But once you've completed the program, either four months or six months into your course, that you do um, relocate to the city where you're looking for jobs so that you spend a considerable amount of time there so that you can attend and schedule interviews in person. Let's see, um, another one from me, uh, Richards is, thanks, and one last question. What skills are taught by qualified graduates as software developers as opposed to uh, just web developers? I can tackle that. So one note is titles are irrelevant. Like there are, every company has a different definition of what is an engineer, what is a web developer, sorry, what is an engineer, a developer, a programmer, a thankful, for example, everyone calls themselves an engineer. We market this product as helping you become web developers, um, but you also, like there's other boot camps that uh, market themselves as becoming software developers too. It's honestly a matter of syntax. Um, if you ask a general question to engineer, they might say, uh, oh, if you know data structures and algorithms, that would qualify you 
to be a software engineer, and we do teach that in our bootcamp, but it's just kind of being honest in what you're actually building. You're building web applications, so we, we're saying this is a web development bootcamp, but you are also learning software engineering principles, and as you saw in our jobs report, we have graduates who have become software engineers. Yeah, and a good example, I think, to highlight really how kind of irrelevant in some cases a job title can be. Two of our most recent grads here in New York City are working the very same position, they're making the same salary, they're both entry level developers slash engineers, but they work at very different companies. One of them works at IBM as a software engineer, the other works at a startup as a developer. Again, their titles are very, very different, but they're doing the same work. They're full stack developers, they work with the same technologies, and they're working in the same capacity. Same salary, everything. Every company has a different but different title. So it is it is different. Of course, if you're someone who's a front-end developer and you don't know backend, you couldn't call yourself a software engineer. But if you're a full stack developer and you're building a an application that requires you to work with data structures and algorithms or really architecting a database, you're a software engineer. Um, Alaric asked, times are all given in DST, are any courses done in different time zones such as PSD? So first of all, in the full-time bootcamp, we've had students all over America. Um, in every single cohort, there are students who live in the Bay Area or Los Angeles or in the West Coast, and they, and they are in the, in the boot camp. We have specified EST just to make it you know, consistent. Um, but yeah, people have been taking them in, in the West Coast. If you are someone who uh, is really mindful of not waking up <laughs> at 7 a.m. for it, then maybe the flexible boot camp makes more sense. And that's exactly what it's for. You still will go through similar curriculum, but um, you'll do it at the time that you want to do it too. And this is um, a quick question to kind of piggyback off that. I need to ask, full-time program is generally for four months as far as I know. Is this schedule based or one can move there with, uh, with their own pace and can complete if they want to before four months? No, the full-time program is exactly four months and you are following a daily structure, a daily schedule. So yeah, it's, it's not very possible. rigorous. Um, we haven't really had uh, students who are like breezing through the content enough that they can finish half the time because, as we said, the, if you look on the website as well, first seven weeks are learning all the full stack JavaScript. You build a full stack app on week eight. There's a break week, two weeks of data structure algorithms, another full stack app, flex week, swap week, three week capstone. So each week and day is highly structured. To when you graduate, you know know the content. You have an impressive portfolio of four portfolio pieces, and then you have all the resume. Um, all the career assets you need to help start the job hunt. Um, another question we have from Michelle regarding the schedule and, uh, and appointments is, um, our schedule is 10 to 6, what happens if I have an appointment between those times, is there a makeup day? Yeah, definitely, if you have a doctor's appointment you know, on a that's Tuesday, fine. that's fine. If you, you have an emergency that comes up, like you're sick or some reason, just talk to, again, it's all about communication. These yeah. aren't policies, you're talking people. to people, people. So if Michelle, you're sick, you'll just let your program manager know, and say, hey, I'm sick, or I have a doctor's appointment, and then we'll work around that. Yeah, two questions relating to costs and financing the program. First one is coming from David. Hey, David, spoke earlier. Um, how stringent are the credit hurdles to get financing? If I don't have good credit, can I still attend? Yeah, uh, another one of the reasons that we partner with Skills Fund is that they are very progressive um, in approaching lending. They understand that for most students enrolling in a bootcamp program like Thinkful is that offers job placement and the job placement guarantee. That means a higher earning potential. That means job security. And so they do work with students to um, approve most of the right. students that we work with if you're able to bring on a co-signer. Um, and and Skills Fund specifically works with coding yeah. bootcamp students. They're not just a random financial firm. They are, and there's other examples of them, but Skills Fund works with Very coding bootcamps. Like um, we've had conversations back and forth. And, and just a quick note there, uh, you can find out whether you're approved for Skills Fund before you join the bootcamp. So if you end up joining the full-time um, prep course, um, which we'll drop a link again as a reminder. Um, in that onboarding call, I will ask you, how are you uh, thinking about paying if you end up eventually joining? If you mention skills from her loan, I'll send you the link to apply for the loan, and you will figure out whether you approved or not before we even have the final check-in. And with the flexible bootcamp, you can do that directly from the page too. Definitely. Yeah, if you do have any specific questions about your credit history or score, um, because Skills Fund is an independent lender, um, they would be best answered by a Skills Fund representative. Um, they're very, very open to talk to students. I think they have a number that you can call directly on the application page. Um, another question that was from Alric, are there any costs outside of the tuition? No. All the software that you'll be using is entirely open source, so it's all free. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. the pairing tools you use, Screen Hero is free. Um, if there is anything that is costing money, we will pay for it. Yeah, some students actually work with Balsamic or Sketch when they're building their capstone projects, and it's great that they learn to use these tools because they're going to be using them as developers anyway. So, um, and these are low monthly things that again, people can cover as part of the program, but no other costs outside of tuition. Yeah, and actually a fun note on that, uh, for either bootcamp, let's say you're graduating and you want to add more skills to your skill set, like the Rails class, or the Android class, or the iOS class, we'll just give you access to that curriculum. Yeah. You'll have access, anything that's on thinkful.com slash courses, we'll just give you access to. But again, we need to be smart about that, because uh, we need to make sure you're focused, so I'm not yeah. going to give you access to Rails curriculum in week one, but maybe during flex week, where you're picking a skill to learn or after you graduate. Um, but yeah, you'll have you'll be able to access any of Thinkful's content. Yeah, and a couple of questions from Allison. Sorry about that, Allison. Uh, what kind of projects are built in the program? Are we creating clones or recreating other sites? That's one question. Um, and the other question that we received was... Um, we have answered the other one. Oh, we answered the other one, yeah. Okay, so projects, yeah. Projects are a very, very important component of the curriculum in the program. Fomik mentioned some of the projects that you'll be building in the full-time program and that they are. Um, some individual projects that you work on with your personal mentor, others that you work on with other students. There are about 25 to 25 or so smaller size projects that you build in both programs that are you know, introductory, they're helping you build a skill or practice a skill, not necessarily pro uh, portfolio worthy, some of them. The main focus will be these four capstone projects that you build in both the flexible program and the full-time program. These are entirely student created, entirely original. You'll never go to an employer interview and present them a clone of Airbnb or Reddit or um, Pinterest or Etsy. It'll always be unique portfolio pieces that you present. Ideas that you come up yourself. Yeah. And it'll help you do that too. Yeah, so if you're someone like, I have no idea what I want to build, that's great. The mentors will work with you on that. It really is taking you through the entire product creation cycle. It's a very, very immersive experience. Like you'll have to develop wireframes, sketch yeah. it out, uh, make a travel mm -hmm. management board, and kind of go through that whole process, just like an engineer would. Get in touch with family members, ask them about their experience user with the feedback. app. Yeah, yeah, user feedback. It's really exciting, actually. Um, let's see, some other questions that we've received, trying to make sure that we get through all of these. Uh, are there team projects in the flexible program? Thanks, Will. Uh, there are, in that you can attend pair programming sessions in the flexible program. They're scheduled throughout the entire week. Uh, one of my favorite sessions was hosted yesterday, actually, by one of our, our mentors, his name is Will. William, and he was hosting a, uh, a pair programming section focusing on data structures and algorithms in the, uh, the technical interview space, meaning he was pairing students one-on-one, -on -one, making them go through what they would be probably doing in a technical interview, working with data structures and algorithms. So they were building a project, they were working on it together. Other projects will work, uh, will cover working with Node.js, others will cover with React. Pair programming sessions are available for you in the Flexible program. We're actively introducing more of them each week. Um, but there are no group projects and that you wouldn't be working with three or four other students as part of the program. There is a collaborate channel on Slack, but because the course is self-paced, it's really not um, a component that we can make a requirement in the curriculum, at least not yet. So you do have the option of pair programming, you definitely have the option of collaborating with other students, but it is very important that you reach out to your program manager and to your mentor and that you take that extra step. Uh, it looks like we missed a question about the prep course. How do you decide um, whether I'm a good fit for the program, um, in terms of admission, acceptance. Um, this is a very transparent process. Um, so from the get-go, I mean, we already showed you the slide of what we look for. So in that onboarding call, I'll go over that again. I'll walk you through exactly what you need to do um, in terms of finishing the content. And then I'll tell you exactly what we look for. Every single student who has come into that final check-in with me has already known before whether they're going to move on to the program. Um, I'm not looking for reasons to uh, reject a candidate. Um, in fact, the opposite. I'm looking for great signs that they'll succeed. Um, it's, it's part of our kind of values of universal education. Um, so yeah, the point of, you will know in the prep course whether you'll join the full-time boot camp. Um, and our goal is to try to develop something that is universal and that fits with everyone. But we'll be honest about it. If I think that the pace of the boot camp is going to be too intense, or too fast, then I will be honest about it and maybe recommend the flexible boot camp. Or we could just push back the starting date from um, October 31st to yeah, November 28th. 28th. Exactly. So uh, feel free to enroll in the prep course now. And if we think that, oh, it's kind of rushing too far into it and you're not going to really kind of do well if you start in October, we'll just push towards uh, November. Again, this is not like a policy kind of thing. You're talking to people, you're talking to us. So we will coordinate together what is best for you. 
Yeah, and on that note, um, I wanted to end that by, or end this session by saying that if you are someone who's interested in the Flexible program, please schedule a call with me. Um, we can actually just have our first call be on a video chat call where I share my screen, I walk through what the typical week would look like for you in the Flexible program, you can look at the curriculum in detail, look at the project um, guidelines that you follow, look at how you get in touch with your mentor, all of these components so that you have a really clear understanding of what the Flexible program would be like for you. But it is important that we schedule a one-on-one -on -one call so that I'm able to answer your specific questions, maybe talk about how the program would be uh, customized around your specific level of experience. So the best place to do that would be to go to thinkful.com. Uh, just click any of the links that say schedule a call with me. You'll see my, my face everywhere. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll take it from there. We'll talk about the, the flexible program, maybe the, the full-time program may be a good fit, maybe not. Any questions you have about the financing options or any of our other programs, we'll be able to answer. But um, Last question that I saw from Roy, after the boot camp, how would we compare to a CS major coming out of a top school? Uh, that's a good question, but I honestly, my response to that would be, you are actually, you would be applying for different jobs. CS majors or the people who graduate out of, uh, or any CS major, not necessarily top school, there are specific positions that you would be applying for. As a boot camp grad, you're applying for web developers, you're applying for software developers, um, positions like that, but there are, when companies hire, they know that this is someone who came right out of college. So there's like a different expectation level, so uh, there really wouldn't be a comparison there. Uh, but in terms of skill set, the thing that you would uh, benefit, the thing you would be able to stick out compared to them, is that you have learned all of this in three or four months, and you still have the drive and the capacity to continue learning. Like, remember, when you graduate from a boot camp, um, you should not stop learning. And that's, that's our goal with Thinkful. Like on our marketing page, we mentioned two goals, like learn full stack JavaScript and get hired as a developer. But the kind of deeper goal within those is learn how to learn. So learning how to pick up any language after you graduate. So when you're finished with the bootcamp, you can, if your company requires it, you'll, learn, you'll be able to learn Python quickly. And then the second thing, instead of just learning, or learning enough to get hired as a developer, we want you to have a high career growth trajectory. We want you to get into position where six months from after your job, you get a promotion, or you get a raise and you start uh, getting into the world of being a senior engineer. That's our ultimate goal. Um, and that's what we try to prepare you for coming out of the boot camp. Yeah. Um, one last thing I want to add to that is that not every computer science degree graduate wants to be a developer. Um, certainly, I know tons of friends that I went to school with that didn't want to be developers or engineers. They wanted to go into something very different related to computer science. So um, you are applying for different jobs, you're definitely competitive, you're definitely gonna be um, making a good starting salary and are work gonna be working full time as a developer engineer. But yeah, on that note, um, thanks everyone for joining us for the info session this evening. Um, if you're on the West Coast, I wish you a good rest of the work day. If you're somewhere on the East Coast, a delicious dinner, hopefully. If you do have any questions, shoot them my way, noelleofthinkful.com is the email. Otherwise, we can schedule a call. And if you have any feedback, by the way, for me about the session, something that you wanted to see cover, maybe a question that we didn't get to, feel free to include that in the email you send me. We're happy to take that feedback in and really improve the way that you um, we talk about the program. So, And uh, for everyone who has enrolled in the prep course, don't forget to reply to my email so we can schedule a call and get you onboarded and kind of get the ball rolling so you can get matched with the mentor and start the prep course. Alrighty. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. I hope you have a good rest of the day. Slash evening. Bye.